Hey there guys, I'm the Royal Gorilla and welcome to Doom Eternal. Today, I'm going to be bringing together all the easter eggs we've looked at on the channel so far and a whole bunch of new easter eggs that you can find in Doom Eternal. So without further ado, let's get going. The first easter egg we're going to be taking a look at in this video involves a dead child. I always like to keep it light here. Commander Keen is an old video game created by id Software, with its latest instalment being on the Game Boy Color in 2001. Since then, the Commander has come against some hard times, and I don't just mean the mobile game, seeing as in Doom 2016, you could find his skeleton. Well, in Doom Eternal, it seems like the Doom Slayer has kept Keen's skull, helmet and ray gun as a little souvenir, and now proudly displays them in his personal quarters. This, however, isn't the only place that we can find some references to Commander Keen. One of the collectible albums, Shadows Don't Scare, from Commander Keen, features Keen's skeletal remains once again. Also, during the Ark Complex mission, in the shop you can find some Commander Keen branded candies. He may be dead, but his legacy certainly lives on. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at another easter egg that not only is a reference to Commander Keen, but has also showed up in games like Quake and even the Hitman series. The easter egg we're looking for can be found on Doom Eternal's Cultist Base mission. In this particular area of the map, you'll be able to find something that seems completely out of place. What we found right here is what's known as a dope fish. It first appeared in 1991's Commander Keen and continued to make multiple appearances throughout the Quake franchise and other id Software games. This also isn't the only instance of dope fish making an appearance in Doom Eternal. Continuing on the cultist base mission, another can be briefly seen near this location. One more dope fish can be found in a secret cave just outside of the map. There may be more dope fish in this mission or elsewhere in the game, but these are the ones that I found at this time. There are however a couple more references you can find if you head into the Fortress of Doom. Making your way downstairs from the main deck, you can find what is essentially Doom Guy's personal quarters. In this room, you can find a bookshelf featuring the interestingly titled book From Nopefish to Dopefish, The Dope Tale. Even more than that, heading over to take a look at the chainsaw on the wall, it's very clear to see that this is in fact not a chainsaw at all, it's actually a dope saw. Also in the Fortress of Doom, once you've found the collectible album, you can take a look at the poster for You've Got to Eat Your Vegetables from Commander Keen, featuring the dope fish once again. And if you still haven't had your fix of dope fish, head to the Ark Complex mission where in the gift shop, you'll be able to find a selection of dope fish branded food, including fruit chews, dope chan, dope nuts, and even some sushi flavored candy. Doom Eternal puts players directly into the middle of a war-torn earth after it's been ravaged by a demonic apocalypse. That's not too dissimilar from Fallout's nuclear apocalypse, but I'd say Doom is definitely a little more intense. Aside from apocalypses, there's a small easter egg in Doom Eternal that links Doom and Fallout even further. 
In the Fortress of Doom, making your way down to Doom Guy's private quarters, you'll be able to find a bookshelf containing a number of small easter eggs that we've already mentioned a few times before. The one particular easter egg that we're here to take a look at now, however, is the book titled The Vault Dweller's Survival Guide, preparing yourself and your loved ones for the inevitable nuclear apocalypse. This book is taken directly from the Fallout universe, in which it was published by vault and issued to the residents of their numerous Vault-style Fallout shelters. This book was also made available in real life as part of Fallout 4's Collector's Edition, so if you want to get your hands on a copy, just head to Amazon or something. Not sponsored. For another Fallout easter egg, look no further than the Ark Complex mission, during which this stuffed animal can be seen in a shop window. This is actually a Mr. Fuzzy toy originating from Fallout 76. Doom Eternal has something of a curiosity inside Doom Slayer's personal quarters. You'll be able to find an empty rabbit's hutch alongside some rabbit food. This seems to suggest that the hyper masculine macho Doom guy has himself a pet rabbit, and that's absolutely correct. Just to the left of this hutch, you can even see Doomguy depicted alongside his furry little buddy, affectionately named Daisy. Daisy actually originates back to the classic Doom games, where she was again Doomguy's faithful companion, however she did come to an unfortunate end at the conclusion of the original Doom. Now that poses the question, if the hutch is empty, where is Daisy now? Well, turns out she's actually made her way out into the world. Daisy can be found in every single Doom Eternal mission, following the Doom Slayer on his journeys. For example, on the cultist base mission, Daisy can be spotted hanging underneath a crane. Additionally, on Exalta, Daisy is found hiding just off to the side of the walkway at the foot of a statue. Daisy can be spotted once more courtesy of an album cover collectible. She features prominently on this poster for Wondering About My Loved Ones, a music track actually from Wolfenstein 3D. John Bain, more commonly known as Total Biscuit, was a very big player for many years in the PC gaming scene, with a particular love for 2016's Doom. Sadly, in 2018, he lost his long-running battle with cancer. Doom Eternal contains a touching tribute to Total Biscuit, alongside a message of solidarity. In the mission Super Gore Nest, in a shop window in the first area, you'll be able to spot the dimly lit easter egg. A top hat, the iconic symbol of Total Biscuit's YouTube channel, along with a sign saying, Slay Cancer. Doom Eternal is full of lava. It's literally coming out of the walls. To be fair, for a game that does partially take place in hell, you wouldn't really expect any less. You know what's also hell? Dying. Especially dying in an uncool way. Doomguy seeks to combine both of these problems into a fiery death that's cool enough for any 80s action hero. If you find yourself burning to death, keep an eye out for what happens as you sink into the lava. The thumbs up expression is a direct reference to Terminator 2 Judgment Day, in which Arnie sacrifices himself by being submerged into molten metal, giving a final thumbs up as he sinks out of sight. Not 
Doom Eternal pays homage to previous games in the Doom franchise in loads of different ways. From classic weapons to demons that have been with the series from the very first entry. But perhaps the best way is hidden within the PC in Doom Guy's personal quarters. Inside the Fortress of Doom, downstairs you'll be able to find a very old school PC. Now at first glance there doesn't seem to be that much going on here. But if we know the secret code, that'll all change. The code itself can be found near the computer on the bookshelf. Retconned, the life and times of Flynn Taggart is what we're here for. For those of you who aren't in the know, Flynn Taggart was the original name of Doom Guy, but now it's going to be the password we need for the computer. Simply enter this name into the code field and you'll unlock a fully playable in-game version of classic Doom 2. You know what, I probably should have mentioned this one first, but you can also unlock the original Doom to play alongside Doom 2. This one, however, isn't quite as easy as you'll have to collect every single cheat code in the game before you have access to it. After that though, it comes pre-installed and ready to go. Doom Eternal is a game that shares a few similarities with another fairly recent FPS, Prey. Least of which is that both games are published by Bethesda Softworks. Well, this little easter egg in Doom Eternal brings the two games even closer together. Whilst it may be possible to find this elsewhere, I found this easter egg during the Ark Complex mission. At this location, during the mission, you'll be able to find a small post-it note on the back of a PC monitor reading not a Mimic. This is in reference to the alien species called Mimics from 2017's Prey, which have the ability to mimic inanimate objects. Do you know what, perhaps we can now add Prey to the universe already shared by Doom and Wolfenstein. That's a crossover I'd love to see. And if you want even more, if we once again head to the bookshelf in the Fortress of Doom, you can find another reference to Prey with the book titled To Pray or Not To Pray. Doom 2016 had a very interesting little easter egg featuring a birthday cake and a balloon. Doom Eternal has this same easter egg, but it's had something of an upgrade. So, on the mission Super Gore Nest, once you've collected all three keys and proceeded to open the nest, three of these happy birthday balloons will spawn in different locations around this area. All you need to do is find each balloon, which I will show you now, and shoot each one. So now that's done, this delicious looking birthday cake will have spawned. There's just one final step to this easter egg and that's to collect the pickup just above the cake which will cause two seriously pissed off tyrants to spawn. Doom Eternal has a very interesting sense of humour, and I think that's no more apparent than inside the Fortress of Doom. If we once again head all the way to Doom Guy's personal quarters, we'll take one more look at that bookcase that I'm sure everyone is fed up of by now. Aside from the easter eggs we've already mentioned here, all of these books are easter eggs in their own right, and rather than go through every single one of them, I wanted to pick out some of my choice favourites. So, on the upper shelf, you can find Fifty Shades of Slay, a reference to Fifty Shades of Grey, Slayenstein, a reference to Frankenstein, The Man in the High Argent Tower is The Man in the High Tower, 
The very hungry caco demon is, of course, the very hungry caterpillar. Demon Farm is a play on Animal Farm. And The Great Gutsby is, of course, The Great Gatsby. 1984 Dead Demons is just 1984. Maybe one of my favourites is Green Eggs and Pentagrams, which is, of course, Green Eggs and Ham. And we also have the Caco in the Rye, referencing the Catcher in the Rye, and the picture of Dorian Slay, which is, you know, Dorian Gray. That's the upper shelf, now onto the lower shelf. Here you can also see Why I'm So Great by Dork Norcom. That is clearly a reference to Duke Nukem and his extremely large ego. Mesa Science Monthly, predicting unforeseen consequences, is actually a reference to Half-Life, in which the company Black Mesa exists, along with one of the game's chapters being called Unforeseen Consequences. Living with rage and other common emotions in the apocalyptic wasteland is a reference to ID Software's Rage franchise. And finally for the books, How to Comb Your Mustache by Clifton M. Fishbatch. This book is actually a little memorial to Clifton M. Fishbatch, who sadly lost his fight with cancer in 2008. He's probably more commonly known as the YouTuber Markiplier's late father, hence why the book is called How to Comb Your Mustache. And finally, down the bottom, we also have a bunch of what look like board game boxes for different Quake games and all the Doom games, including a book which is the Doom 2 art book. So, we've taken a look at most of the major easter eggs to be found in Doom Eternal, but there are still a few smaller easter eggs that I don't want to overlook. So, it's time for my favourite part of these videos. It's time for the lightning round. In Final Sin, a hologram can be heard saying this. Money is God. This is a reference to the movie Airheads and the band Motorhead. Also in Final Sin, id Software's logo can be spotted in the distance. In various locations, you can find secret textures and sprites from classic Doom games. Doom Guy has a skateboard near his desk, referencing his time as a bonus character in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. The Guns and Bullets magazine contains the Over 9000 meme. Doom Eternal's Hellwalker comic is a reference to Hellboy, they even use the same font. The Soul Cube from Doom 3 can be found just sitting on Doom Guy's desk. In the Ark Complex shop, the Lil Bits candy is a reference to Rick and Morty. And while not much of a secret, the classic Doom Guy armour is unlockable inside the Fortress of Doom. Well then, there we have it guys, that was hopefully all of the easter eggs in Doom Eternal. I do hope that you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and of course subscribe for more. I've been the Royal Gorilla, over and out. His name is Luke and he's more than your average gamer, no ordinary let's player, no bad easter eggs much better, da 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 da. His name is Luke aka the Royal Gorilla, even bigger than the giant Godzilla Follow him in every game he goes da, da, da.